Harderverse is an incredible set of tools that enables several VR editing features in DaVinci Resolve. In another video on this channel, I showed how to install Cardiverse, and once it's installed, use it entirely on the edit page in Resolve. But this video is for people who prefer to work on the Fusion page in Resolve. Working in Fusion is a little more advanced, but there are more Cardiverse tools available, and you have more control in Fusion. And at the time of this recording, if you are working with HDR color, and if you need the Cardiverse vignette effect, then you do have to work on the Fusion page. Just like in my other video on Cardiverse, this video is designed for people working with the Canon R5C with the 5.2 millimeter dual fisheye lens. These tools will work with footage from other camera systems, but the examples you'll see here are intended for the R5C. We will not be using Canon's VR utility to import and convert video from the camera. Cardiverse is an alternative that gives us much more control. And as always, I want to thank Andrew Hazelden for creating and supporting Cardiverse for free and for his guidance as I prepared these videos. Now, before we go into DaVinci Resolve, I want to open my project drive where I have all of the media files for this project. On this drive, I have this EXR file. This is an STMAP template file, which we will need to convert our video from the Canon R5C. If you have not watched my video on installing Cardiverse, you should go back to that video to see where this STMAP file came from. And you don't have to store it in any particular location, but you do have to have it somewhere where you can easily find it. This STMAP file has a resolution of 8640 by 4320, which will be important in a moment. Now I can go over to Resolve where I have a project already open, and I want to review a few details in this project. In the media pool, I have some video, this was shot with the Canon R5C, and it has not been processed in any way. I did not use Canon's VR utility to import these clips. I simply copied the raw CRM files from the camera's memory card to my project drive and imported them into Resolve. We see that these CRM files have a resolution of 8192 by 4320 with a frame rate of 59.94. I've already set up my project and added a few of these clips to the timeline, but I want to click the gear button in the bottom right to check my project settings. My project resolution is 8640 by 4320. Our raw footage will start at 8192 by 4320, but we're going to use Cardiverse along with that STMAP file to convert our raw video to the equa rectangular format. And when that happens, it will conform to the resolution of the STMAP file, in this case, 8640 by 4320. This maximizes the resolution and gives our frame a two to one pixel ratio, which is ideal for VR 180 video. So that's why my project resolution is set to 8640 by 4320. Of course, the frame rate is set to 59.94, the same as the source video. And in the image scaling category, I have the mismatched resolution option set to stretch frame to all corners. And that's set for both the input scaling and the output scaling. Okay, now I'll close the project settings and we can get started. And our first job will be to convert this video from the fisheye view to the equa rectangular view. I'll start by selecting a clip on the timeline. In the top right, I'll open the inspector panel. And if there are any effects applied, you can select the effects tab to see them. If you followed along with one of my other videos and applied the Cardiverse effects there, you should make sure to remove them before going to the Fusion page. We do not want to apply the same effects twice. I don't have any effects on this clip. So I'll click the Fusion button at the bottom to go to the Fusion page. Now the goal here is not to try to teach you how to work in Fusion. I'm assuming you have some basic understanding of how to work here. At the top, I'll click the Clips button so we see the line of clips at the bottom and I want to make sure I have the right clip selected here. And above the second playback monitor, I'll click the single viewer button because I prefer to have only one playback viewer here. In the node space, I just see the media in node and the media out node. Click the effects button at the top to show the effects panel, go to the template section, and find the KVR Super ST map effect. You can always use the search tool if you have a hard time finding it. So drag that to the node workspace. And if it opens a file browsing window, you'll need to navigate to and select your STMAP file. This is the template file that we saw a moment ago. I'll navigate to my project drive where I keep that EXR file and select it. 
make sure the new node is selected and make sure the inspector panel is open and you will see the controls for the Super ST map. If you need to choose a different ST map file, you can click the browse button here. Next, I'll route this new node between the media in and the media out. So connect the media in into the yellow input arrow on the KVR Super ST map node. Then connect the Super ST map node to the media out. Make sure to select the Super ST map node, and then you'll need to use the effect controls in the inspector panel to set the 3D convergence. I'll switch to the anaglyph view mode, and I'll zoom into the center of the frame, and you should choose a convergence point. Some people will tell you to set the convergence on the most distant point in the center of the frame, but I'm going to set the convergence on our performer's face, because that's where the camera's focus is set. You will probably need to adjust the Y shift until both images are even on the up and down plane, then adjust the X shift until the red and blue come together on that convergence point. When that point is basically grayscale, then your X shift is set. Now, in my case, I don't really need to adjust the Y shift value, but that's only because this STMAP file was created from this exact sample file. Unless you're using an STMAP file that you generated from your camera, you will need to make adjustments and you'll land on different values on the X and Y shift. Everything else in the frame will still have some red and blue separation, which just shows how far it will pop out from the background when you view it in 3D. And if you have red, blue anaglyph glasses like this, you can see this image in 3D, but that's not actually required to get this set. When you're done with that, you can reset the zoom to fit, then switch the view mode back to RGB. And if you just need the equirectangular conversion, then you're all set here. But you probably know, if you zoom in a little on the center of the image, you can see the camera's lenses in the frame. This is a common issue with some 3D lenses, like the Canon dual fisheye lens. Since we are not using the Canon VR utility, we do not have an automatic way to cover the lenses. Instead, we'll use the vignette tool that comes with Cartiverse. I'll set the zoom back to fit, and in the effects panel, I'll switch to the tools category. Using the search field, I'll search for vignette, and we see the option for the KVR vignette. Now, there is a KVR vignette listed in the template section, but that's designed to be used on the edit page and will work a little differently. For my purposes, we want the one listed under Tools. I'll drag that to the node space. And now this node cannot simply be placed in between two existing nodes. We need to use a Merge node. So in the bar above the node space, I'll find the option for Merge and drag that onto the node space. And this will need to connect together after the Super ST map node. Of course, you can drag these nodes and place them anywhere you want to make them easier to work with. I'll disconnect the Super ST map node from the media out, then connect it to the yellow input on the merge, making that the background input for the merge. And I'll also connect it to the yellow input on the vignette node. Then I'll drag the output of the vignette to the green input arrow on the merge. The vignette will be the foreground object. I'll connect the merge node to the media out. Then I'll select the merge node and set the apply mode to multiply, which sets how the two layers mix together. Now I can select the vignette node and in the inspector panel, I can adjust the diagonal field of view slider. And that will change the amount of the vignette. So you can really narrow the field of view a lot for a creative effect, or if you need to crop something out of the video. You can even keyframe this value to adjust the vignette over time. Or I'll open the vignette up pretty wide, then zoom into the center of the frame so we can see the lenses there. And by just shrinking down the field of view just a little bit, we can cover the lenses. And we see that 200 is a nice round number that gives us a minimum vignette, but still covers the lenses. Of course, you should make sure you zoom in and land on the right value for your specific video and I'll reset the zoom level to fit. And you do lose a little bit of field of view using this technique, but when viewed on a VR headset, you probably won't notice much difference. These two tools together give us everything we need to replace the Canon VR utility. But by processing our video with Cartiverse here, we're able to make manual adjustments, keyframe values over time, and this is all compatible with HDR color if you've set that up. And of course, there are other Cartiverse tools that can be used here in Fusion. And if there's some demand, I'll make more videos showing some of those other tools. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that.